In my eternal quest to scratch my G-Shock itch, I came across another model that caught my eye, the GLS 5600. In this case, the GLS 5600 CL-1. This model here is obviously designed for snow sports, since it contains an interesting low temp LCD that performs well down to minus four Fahrenheit. That's minus 20 Celsius for anyone outside of the US. What I love about this watch is the bright white dial and some extra flair in the module. Let's give it a comparison to my old standby, the GWM 5610, and also pop both watches into the freezer for a side-by-side -side comparison of the LCD performance. All right, let's check it out. So this watch is part of Casio's G-Lide lineup of watches that focus on sports such as skiing, snowboarding, surfing, and skateboarding. I believe these used to be called the Extreme lineup back in the late 90s. Each watch series in the lineup usually contains something specific to the sport like a tide graph for surfers or a thermometer or a unique strap styling like Velcro or cloth for water sports. It comes in four different colors, in addition to the blacked out version with a Velcro strap. So this particular model came with a cloth band that I removed. The band has a G-Lide patch and a stainless steel buckle and keeper. It's a perfectly fine band, but I removed it because frankly it's too long for my 6.75 inch wrist. Let's give this a quick look. So honestly it's a nice band, it really is. I just did not like how you're not able to adjust the keeper at all. So I continue to have this flap hanging out which gets caught on clothing and whatnot. Luckily the watch takes the same standard G-Shock bands so I actually swapped it for one of the newer bands much more soft and supple than the standard G-Shock band. So it fits perfectly and exactly. And there's actually a link to the description for this band on eBay. I think it's about 10 bucks, but I do highly recommend it. This watch has a lot of unique features compared to your standard G-Shock. First off, it has two stopwatch timers that record to one one hundredths of a second up to 999 hours. Let's check out stopwatch one. And stopwatch two. So they both run simultaneously and independently. Additionally, the first stopwatch has a five second countdown, which is great if you're doing a timed speed run with a friend or if you just need an audible notification of when the clock starts. And the timer on this watch can count down from 24 hours, which is fantastic. It has an auto repeat feature, so when setting the timer, you can change the graphic to the left. It also has progress beepers, where the watch beeps at various times during a countdown. So you can stay informed about the progress without having to stare at your watch. And when the progress beeper is turned on, the watch will sound four short beeps at the top of each countdown minute. Then it will emit four short beeps when there's 30 seconds left. And finally, you get a short beep every second for the last 10 seconds, so it's pretty cool. And if the timer is more than six minutes, you actually get the beeps for each of the 10 seconds before the five minute mark is reached. And as you can see here, the LCD module also contains a graphical representation for every 10 second interval. And when the watch is in timer or stopwatch mode, it goes from left to right during stopwatch and right to left during the timer. We've also got uh, flash alert mode. So flash alert, when it's turned on, the illumination flashes for the alarms, the hourly chime, the timer, and the stopwatch auto mode. 
And finally, this G-Shock watch has a spectacular electroluminescent mode, which lights up the entire dial. Unlike other G-Shock models where the LCDs illuminate on their own, this one just lights up the background. And you can also set the duration for 3 or 5 seconds in timekeeping mode right here. And of course the watch also has dual time mode, 5 alarms, and daylight savings time adjustment. It also displays the day of the week in three characters instead of two, which is nice. But the look and feel of this watch is just really nice. There's the case back for you. The bright white dial really stands out on the black bezel. I really like it. So there is no solar power and no multiband 6 with this watch, which makes sense. The rechargeable lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries that are usually used in those watches just can't withstand the extreme high or the extreme low temperatures, which is why this watch uses a unique lithium battery that can withstand those temperature extremes. But I could swear that this LCD is darker and more viewable from different angles. My eyes could be playing tricks on me, or it could just be a placebo effect, but it's crisp and sharp, and it looks really nice. And that leads me to the module itself. I wanted to compare the low-temp LCD on the GLS 5600 to the LCD on my GWM 5610, just to give you a quick look at the differences. So let me pop them in my zero degree Fahrenheit freezer for an hour and I'll be right back. All right, and here we have both watches fresh out of the zero degree freezer. Let's take a look at the GWM5610 first of all. Let's go look at that dial. It's a little foggy in there. So as we click through, you can see that the LCD is pretty frozen. That is very slow. And then over here on the GLS 5600, let's check this one out. Performs much better. Although still a little bit slow, but definitely better than the 5610. Let's get both stopwatches going here and do a side-by-side. -side. Honestly, both are still a little bit slow. I thought the uh, low temp LCD might, uh, might be a little bit quicker. Actually, that's some ice crystals on the face there. Let's get those off. Check them out again. Yeah, it looks like the low temp LCD is performing a little bit better. Honestly, they're both a little bit comparable. Definitely a little bit more ghosting on the 5610 than there is on the GLS 5600. You can tell the 5610 is a bit more sluggish, whereas the 5600 is a little bit more crisp. It took a couple seconds for the 5600 to kind of get up to speed here. So there you go, the 5600 definitely performs a little bit better in cold temperatures. Perfect for people who work outside or do a lot of snow sports. All right, so here we have the GLS 5600 on the wrist. And like I said, this is a sharp looking watch. I really do like the white dial. Uh, the screen has definitely come back up to speed. Uh, it took about a minute or so, whereas the 5610 is still a little bit, uh, a little bit ghosting. 
But all in all, I really love this watch. I'm glad I replaced the band. The original band just wasn't for me. It is a good band uh, if you're into that. But uh, they're very easy to swap out. And uh, once again, thanks for checking out my videos. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I love hearing from you guys. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video. And I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and come back and check out more Casio reviews in the future. Thanks a lot and have a great day.